Hello friends, welcome to the school of sport. In this video, I'll be talking about the beautiful sport tennis and how to follow it. 2020 is around the corner and I want you to understand what will happen in 2020 and to follow this beautiful sport. So let's get it started. There is an organization called ATP, Associate of Tennis Professionals that organizes various tournaments throughout the year. Now, if you are one of those people who knows or who follow only four Grand Slams, man, there's so much more than that. Uh, there's so much more. And if you are one of those who don't know anything about tennis, this is perfect video for you. So let's get it going. ATP Tour is an organization. Now they have different kinds of tournament. Basically, they have these four kinds of tournaments. ATP 250 is a tournament where the winner gets 250 points. Uh, ATP 500, the winner get 500 points. 1000 is called Masters, where the winner get 1000 points. And then there's a Grand Slam. So there are only four Grand Slams and they are super popular. Probably you're, you've heard about it. And the winner get 2000 points. So it's a big deal. Now, throughout the year, from January till October, players compete in these tournaments. They gather points and in the end, the top eight players made it to the NITO ATP Finals. And then at the end of the year, they decide a world number one rank. So last year, I mean this year, Rafael Nadal is number one. So this is the whole journey they play throughout the year to compete for the world number one. Now, apart from world number one, winning any one of these tournaments is a big deal in itself, especially the Grand Slam. The prize money, you see the difference in 250, it's $370,000, whereas in Grand Slam, you can win like $3.8 million. Now, that's about types of tournaments, points. Now, I want to talk about the courts on which tennis can be played. So it can be played on a clay coat where the surface is clay or it can be played on a grass coat where the surface is grass or on a hard or synthetic where the surface is very hard. Uh, it's a synthetic layer which is very popular. If you're in United States, uh, this is the most common ground. Now what are the differences in these three? Uh, I'll talk about them in this so if we talk about the hard coat, hard coat, uh, the speed of ball is pretty fast because it's hard, the ball bounces and the speed is fast, the ball comes pretty fast. The bounce is modded because it's hard surface, ball has a good bounce. Uh, players can move really fast because of the hard surface and the grip they get. They can really change the direction really quickly, accelerate fast. So very good coat to see a dynamic tennis. And the court cost is very, very low because you just make a surface one time and that's it. There's pretty much zero maintenance. Now, the second type of coat is clay coat. In clay coat, the speed of ball is slow. After it hits the clay, it slows down. So even if you hit a really good shot really fast, the ball slows down and the bounce is more, which means the opponent has more time to go to the ball you also have more time to go to the ball. So the rallies are longer, the ball is slow, you can reach easily. Uh, players can skid as well, so you run and then you skid, that's a fun part. I really like clay, uh, you can slide very easily. So that's a, that's a good part about clay, it's good on knees, longer rallies, really grueling tennis on clay. There's a medium coat cost because you need to maintain the coat. There's a clay, you need to spread the clay evenly. You need to water the clay timely. So it's a more costlier than the hard coats. Then the third one is grass coat. Now the grass coats are fastest. The ball bounces and then it just flies off because of the grass. It's really tough to return services. And the bounce of ball is very low because of the surface grass. So the fast ball and low bounce and the movement is slow for players because uh, they can slip very easily. They need to be very careful in their movements. So 
uh, if they are running fast, they cannot stop suddenly. They have to slow down. If they stop suddenly, they're going to slip off. So it's a challenging surface, fast surface, low bounce, movement is slow. <laughs> And the cost is very, very high. You need to trim the grasses. You need to water them. It's it's really expensive. And you won't find grass coats uh, very easily. There are only few tournaments with grass coat. And there are only few clubs you would found with the grass coat. Uh, I played on all the coats. My favorite is clay. I can slide. I love slide. Longer rally. So I really enjoy it. I like grass also because I can dive on grass so that's a good thing about grass you can see a lot of diving actions. Now if you talk about the ATP throughout the year how many tournaments they have on these surfaces here's a chart so over here if you look uh, I've categorized clay grass hard and indoor hard. Uh, indoor hard court is just like a hard court. Uh, only thing is because it's indoor, the ball is even faster. That's the main difference. So there are 22 tournaments on clay, nine on grass, just nine because grass is expensive. 21 tournaments are played on hard court and 14 tournaments are played on indoor courts. Basically the indoor courts are around September, October when it gets really cold. Uh, then they play the indoor hard from January till August they be, they play on hard grass and clay uh, if you look at the point distribution it's pretty much uh, more points on the hard and indoor hard court then the second is clay court and the third is grass so if you are a best grass court player you cannot win a lot of points in a year there are only 4500 points you can grab if you win all the grass court tournaments. Anyways, we understand why grass is less because it's expensive. So this is the types of coat and uh, different tournaments. Now, obviously some coat suits some players better than others. So some players are favorite to win on a specific coat than others. Like Rafael Nadal, clay coat king. So he would win on clay. Roger Federer is king of grass. So he's going to have high chances of winning on grass and Novak Djokovic is a hard court player so he has more chances of winning on that surface. So it's about the surfaces. Now going back to the points, remember there's a tournament with 250, 500,000, 2000 points. So what's the difference? Uh, basically the first difference is you get less points for 250. Uh, another thing is the participants. So only 28 players competed singles at ATP 250 tournament. So if you win five matches, you win the tournament and it's uh, spread in a one week. So you play your one match on Monday and then final is on Sunday. Then ATP 500, uh, there are 32 players. Again, you need to win five matches. So it's also one week tournament. ATP 1000s, it's kind of a big deal. If you win 1000, that's a big achievement, lifetime achievement. So there are 96 players and you need to win seven matches. It's a spread across one and a half week to two weeks, depending upon the tournament. Then Grand Slam, there are 128 players and this is really big deal. It's like dream of every tennis player to win one Grand Slam. So if you win a Grand Slam, that's great. Everyone in tennis world will know who you are. If you look at the distribution, uh, here's uh, how tournaments are played throughout the year. So tournament, six tournaments in January and then February becomes really busy time. Uh, March, April, few tournaments. May, June, July, again a busy time. August, September slows down and then in October they have a lot of tournaments. So follow tennis throughout the year. It's so much fun and I'm going to do this with you guys this year. I'll be posting more videos about what's happening, uh, who's going to win, what happened in the previous week. So keep updated. If you talk about 250, there are around 40 tournaments, uh, 513,000, only nine and only four Grand Slam. Why? Uh, multiple reasons. Uh, number one is it's hard to organize big events back to back. So there are only four big Grand Slams. Also, the prize money they need to uh, they need to get these sponsors and all. 
ATP 250 is a little bit uh, okay when there's uh, decent sponsors, uh, decent players. If you look at the big names, the top 10 players, they mostly participate in uh, all the Grand Slams, some of the ATP 1000s and uh, some 500. They don't normally participate in 250. So 250 is kind of like for uh, people who just entered into the ATP World Tour. They are fighting to get grab some points so that they can play 500 and then they fight at 500 to get entry into 1000 and then eventually to get the entry in Grand Slam because only 128 players can play in Grand Slam. So everyone at the bottom is fighting to get a spot in the Grand Slam. Even getting a spot in a Grand Slam is a big deal. So th th this is a distribution. Uh, you need, there are many entry players. So you have a lot of 250 tournaments. Uh, the point distribution among the four is pretty much equal. Uh, the big folks are playing more big tournaments. So they have more points. The small guys, the entry points are playing small tournaments. So even if they win, uh, they don't get too many points. Here's the overall summary. So here I'm showing tournaments by code type, tournaments by their event type. And here's a world map you can see. So a lot of tournaments are in Europe. So European players, it's easier. They don't need to travel a lot. So there are many European tennis players. They roam around their country, play tournaments, win points, make their rank up in the hierarchy. Uh, also in all America, there are many tournaments in the United States. So uh, tennis is pretty popular in the United States as well. There are few in South America. Then Australia is popular. Uh, Melbourne Australian Open is popular. Then there's one in India, in Chennai, uh, few in China russia and uh, that's that's a geographical location for tennis tournaments so if you are nearby just go watch it overall just wanted to show you this picture that tennis doesn't happen only four times in a year it happens throughout the year and i'm super excited to share the detailed information and uh, it would be good to have uh, this journey with me this was just part one talking about the high level in part two i'll go into detail where i'll talk about different players and their benefits their advantages and what 2020 holds for us thank you for watching and stay tuned